For the next hour, the green and gold are in charge. <laughs> Welcome to In the Huddle on the Woodward Radio Network. In the Huddle is brought to you by Mole Lake Casino. Now, here's Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lang. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fifth quarter, our final show of the season. The world champion T.J. Lang sits right next to me. Oh, you guys are awesome, man. Win or lose, you guys are always excited, and, man, it's awesome to have you guys. It's been a great year with you guys. 31-25 over the Pittsburgh Steelers, and uh, not only the four-time Super Bowl champions, but 13-time world champions now. Uh, it's, it sounds pretty good. How, how does it feel like to, to be a world champ? <laughs> uh, it's still settling in. You know, uh, last night was fun, man. We went back to the hotel and partied a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, st we're still letting it settle in a little bit. Man. It still really hasn't hit me. Uh, so many different emotions, you know, I, I, I can't really describe it. It's just... It's a it's an amazing feeling. And, and when you say party, it's not like we would party. It's like it, it's top notch party for you guys. Yeah, we had a, it, was, it was awesome, man. A kid rock played at our hotel. Uh, had a concert and it was great. Everybody was dancing and our, our all our families were there and, and friends. So it was a great time. It was uh, you know a lot of pictures and, and video cameras out and uh, man, it, it was awesome. I, I said this on, on the way here to you, but uh, is Ted Thompson a big party guy? <laughs> Um, I, don't, I saw Ted down there yesterday. Because I don't yeah. see it, you know? Yeah, he was dancing to Kid Rock a little bit. He was dancing. Uh, I think I saw him have a, a beer or two. So, yeah, uh, yeah he, he, was, he was partying with us last night. It was a good time. Yeah, I think I'd pay to see Ted dance to Kid Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Highlight of the night was probably Joe Philbin dancing. That was awesome. I wish there was video of that somewhere because he, he, was getting, he was getting after it on the dance floor a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, there's no, there may not be video of Joe Philbin, but there is at least a uh, still photography picture of you dumping Gatorade on the head coach after the game. Yeah. That was sweet. Um, Ryan Pickett was standing there like, somebody help me, somebody help me. I was like, all right, I'll do it, I guess. So, <laughs> and, and, then he, uh, and then he was the smart one. He let go. And you, and yeah, you're the yeah and I'm the one in the picture, so it looks like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. That, you know, that's a, that's a picture that's going to be around forever. So, yeah. um, definitely, you know, proud to be a part of that. Yeah, 21-3 to 3 lead you guys jump out to. Uh, I, I would imagine in your wildest dreams going in, you didn't think something like that was going to happen. So when it did, what were you thinking? Um... You know, we, we had a couple big plays there early in the first half. Uh, you know, obviously Nick's interception for a touchdown was a huge play for us. But, uh, you know, we uh, – at halftime, we, we, we were basically acting like it was 0-0. I mean, you know, we, we weren't too excited at halftime. And, um, you know, we, we understood we had 30 minutes left to play. So uh, – but it, it was definitely big for us to get off to a big start and, and uh, you know, get our, get our fans into the game a little bit. Um, so it was, it was, it was great. That's, that's one of our main goals, especially on offense, is – is to get off to a fast start and get, get clicking early. It, it was quite fitting. In fact, I, I get the sense you guys would have it no other way than to have guys get hurt and then go out and kick somebody's butt and win a football game. Yeah, you know, we talked about that at halftime. Um, you know, Charles got hurt yeah, before the half, so, uh, you know, he was, he was really emotional in the, in the locker room. Uh, you know, obviously disappointed that he couldn't go out there and finish the game. But, uh, you know, it's kind of been our story of the year. Just you know, somebody goes down, you know, it, if it's your time, go up, step up and make some plays. And I thought yesterday we had a few guys that did that as well. I thought Jarrett Bush, you know, came in and, and stepped up and, and filled right in for Charles. So, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing new, you know. It's, uh, we've been dealing with it all year. So, uh, you know, yesterday was no different. Yeah, I, I heard Woodson tried to deliver a speech in the locker room and just uh, and couldn't do it. It just kind of turned to tears. And this is the guy that had been delivering speech after speech up to this point. Uh, I, I would imagine there was probably a few tears in the locker room at halftime, even though you still had another half of football to be played. Yeah, it, it hit us hard, man, watching Charles, just watching how emotional he was. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy who probably wants it more than anybody. And, and uh, you know, yesterday when, when he – you know, realized he couldn't go back out there. He, he kind of broke down in the locker room a little bit, and uh, the rest of us saw that. And I think, uh, you know, really made us realize that, you know, hey, we're we're doing this for those older guys. Um, you know, felt so bad for Charles, man. He's he, how hard he's worked to get here, and and couldn't go out there and finish the game. But, you know, it, it was it was great seeing him after the game, and, and him and Donald uh, celebrating. Those guys were just you know ecstatic. So, uh, it, it was awesome to get it for those guys. Aaron Rodgers wins the MVP award. 
And, uh, you know, the last guy didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we could finally put that to rest. <laughs> I think, you know, Aaron's our quarterback, Super Bowl champion, MVP. I mean, what else could you ask from a guy? I mean, he's, he's done an outstanding job. 304 yards, three touchdown passes. It really should have been more. There were five drop passes. And one of them, you could say, probably looked like it was headed for a touchdown with James Jones. And Jordy Nelson, as big a game as he had, and he had a great game, but you know he had a few, uh, few drops along the way as well. So Rodgers' numbers could have even been better than what mm -hmm. they were. And uh, it, it really, uh, it, it was his ability to, when the chips were down, I thought a key part in that football game was you know, things were kind of starting to look a little bleak, and I think there was some, probably at least from the fan standpoint, you're, you're kind of sitting on the edge of your seat wondering, oh boy, here we go. And, and, and then when a big play needed to happen, it was uh, Pickett and Matthews forcing the, the hit and forcing the fumble, which was uh, scooped up by Desmond Bishop uh, on Richard Mendenhall, and he's a guy that just doesn't fumble very much. Mm -hmm. Three, that was his third fumble of the season only for his guy that gets as many touches as he did. You guys turned that into seven points with the second touchdown pass to Greg Jennings. And, and, you know, even though they came back and scored, you certainly had to feel a lot better about, uh, you know, about the possibilities of winning that football game. Yeah, that was a huge play. Um, you know, I think uh, there was a TV timeout right before that play, and, and everybody was just kind of, you know, nervous a little bit on the sidelines because offense, you know, we kind of kind of stalled a little bit mm -hmm. there. Um, but... You know, our defense has been the story of the season, man. Any, anytime we need a big play, uh, somebody steps up and, and makes it. And, you know, it's been everybody. Everybody on that defense contributes. Uh, so, you know, Pickett and Clay getting in the backfield there was, was huge for us to get us the ball back. Uh, definitely gave us the momentum for the rest of the game. Woodson, Driver, Clifton, Tauscher, veteran players, <laughs> and now they can say that uh, as, as they're near the end portions of their careers can now say they've got one. And they'll play, uh, some of them will play longer. And, and if they ever get another one, you know, that would be great. If they don't, at least they can say they have it. Yeah, and it, it's awesome, man. We, we did it for those guys. Uh, those guys deserve it more than anybody else. You know, the guys that have been playing, you know, 10, 11, 12 years. Uh, you, you just see, you see it in their eyes how bad they want it. And that was a question I got a lot last week was, uh, you know, how do you feel going to the Super Bowl in your second year? And I was like, well, hey, you know, it's not about me. It's about these older guys. You know, we're, we're going to go out there and get it for them. So definitely great to, you know, put a ring on their finger. All right, we'll take a look more at yesterday's game, including some of the week in Dallas with T.J. Lang. We're back with more at the fifth quarter after this on the Woodward Radio Network. To in the huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lay. And we're back here at the fifth quarter in Little Shoot, brought to you by Mole Lake Casino Resort and Conference Center with offensive lineman T.J. Lang. Packers 31-25 win over the Steelers yesterday, capturing Super Bowl 45. Well, the uh, Bob McGinn had a story in the Journal Sentinel earlier this week says the Packers were in line to have a chance to be a modern day dynasty have the chance at several more championships before it's all said and done. You guys, do you see that one? Yeah, I on? see it. I don't see why not. Um, you know, all the adversity we've been through this year, uh, losing so many guys and, and the guys still stepping up and playing. I mean, it's uh, we got a lot of good guys on this team, good character. So, uh, yeah, you know, we'll, 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 so we'll see what happens. Celebration tomorrow, return to Titletown from 4 to 5 at Lambeau Field. Today you came back from the airport and took the, uh, the bus ride to Lambeau Field and I heard the parade route was well. It really wasn't a parade, but the bus route was pretty uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. They had the, you know, from Lombardi up to, uh, you know, Packerland all closed off for us, and you know, it was packed, man. There were some areas that were about ten people deep, so uh, it was awesome getting back into the stadium. It was just, I mean, people everywhere. It was it was awesome feeling. I had my video camera out, so I was recording it all, and it was. Uh, <laughs> you guys saw me. <laughs> I was, I was hanging out the side of the bus and just taking it all in and enjoying it, man. It, it was awesome. How many people here were at the, at the thing? Woo! Yeah, we got <laughs> one. few hands. <laughs> Three, four, five. All right. Um, you, uh, you spent the week in Dallas, obviously, and, uh, and, and pretty miserable down there. I mean, it was cold. There was an ice storm down there, then a snowstorm down there. And, and it, really, uh, it, it really took the, the Super Bowl. I mean, I, I know it's in cold-weather cities, but cold-weather cities are at least – 
ready to deal with that type stuff with salt and whatever mm-hmm. they need to do to keep the roads clear. They didn't do a very good job of that down there at all. And I'm really surprised that given the, uh, the size of the event that they didn't do a better job of finding someplace, somewhere to get some salt down there and be able to take care of those roads. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, I had a total di- totally different view of what Dallas was going to be like. I thought it was going to be laying by a pool and, and getting a tan. Uh, we got down there, it was about 30 degrees, and Tuesday, the, I mean, from Tuesday to Friday, the roads were pure ice, and they, and that city pretty much shut down. We went out a few times uh, to dinner, you know, downtown, and the, the streets were empty. Nobody was out, and they put sand down on the streets, uh, on the ice. I, I don't know why. I mean, that didn't help at all, but... Uh, it was, it was nasty, man. It was nasty. And it, it cleared up a little bit yesterday. You know, we got, a, I think it was close to 50 yesterday, so at least we got one semi-warm day. In. Yeah, you know, you, you expect, I mean, you're there to play the game, but, you know, the, it, it's nice to have, you know, when you have a couple of nights where you can get out and you do your football <coughs> stuff all day at practice, you do your team meetings, and, you know, then you get a chance to go out. I mean, it's nice to be able to, you know, pick a spot and enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. You know? And, uh, you know, we got down there Monday, and uh, a few of us went out to a nice dinner, and, you know, we got, got around the city a little bit. Uh, you know, Tuesday was media day, so we had the day off. But, uh, yeah, it, it was nice to get out at least. I mean, even though the weather was pretty crappy, it was still nice to, to get out and, and tour the city a little bit. And it was it was awesome. All the people down there were um, real respectful, real nice people. So uh, they, they welcomed us uh, very nice. So does Dallas – Based on what you're able to see, does that work for a Super Bowl? Because I, I, I've heard a lot of, you know, it's too spread out. There's too far between, too, too, too many miles between point A and point B, and tough to really get into a, an atmosphere. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that the Super Bowl should be held every year in New Orleans. It is the perfect place. Everything is, is compact right down in that area, down together. It's a great party city. Uh, it, you know, the, the, the hotels, players' hotels, media hotels, everything, the fans, you're all within about a six-block, eight-block radius, and, and you can pretty much walk wherever you need to go. Yeah, that'd be nice. I've never been to New Orleans, but, uh, you know, Dallas was definitely spread out. Uh, you know, we stayed in Las Colinas, which was uh, about 20 minutes away from downtown and, and about another 20 minutes away from the stadium. But, uh, you know, it was – I enjoyed myself. I mean, yeah. there was – you know, we were right in the middle of, of – you know, Dallas, Irving, Fort Worth. So, uh, you know, a few nights we got to go out to, you know, a different, different city and, and check it out. But uh, I didn't have any problem with it. I had a good first Super Bowl experience. Media day on Tuesday. How was that experience? It was crazy, man. I've, I've never seen so many reporters in my life. There's thousands of them there walking around. And you wouldn't believe some of the questions they asked. Some dumb questions, man. But it was, uh, <laughs> it, it was wild. It was, it was an awesome, it was awesome uh, you know, environment, though, uh, just to get that experience and, and watch everybody uh, walking around having a good time. It, it was fun. Can you imagine? Jarius Wynn, I'm told, his wife had a, delivered a, a baby either late Saturday night or early mm-hmm. Sunday morning. Can you imagine uh, that going on down there? Yeah, that was wild. I talked to Jarius uh, yesterday before the game. And, mm-hmm. He was just ecstatic. I mean, you know, to, to have a baby, and uh, he, we, we were talking about baby names. He, he he wanted to name it Dallas or, or Super because his last name's Win Super Win or the Super. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it was uh, awesome for him, man. That's you know, I've talked to a lot of people, and they said uh, you know the one thing that could be the Super Bowl win is you know the birth of a child, and and he got both of them in the same day. So mm-hmm. you know, awesome for him. How about Cowboy Stadium? Awesome, great stadium. Uh, that got a big screen. I mean, it's it's unreal. It goes from you know thirty yard line to thirty yard line. And my neck hurt after the game because I was staring at it the whole time. But it was uh, it was awesome, man. Their stadium is all you needed is a couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, my parents were up in the you know upper deck and they said they just watched the big screen the whole time. You know, it was it was, it was awesome. But uh, yeah, their stadium's real nice. They did they did a great job with it. How'd your family react to the win? Uh, my mom was crying. Uh, she cries a lot. She was bawling her eyes out when I saw her. <laughs> And uh, my dad was, he was, he was pretty ecstatic. He, uh, he had a few beers in him, so, uh, you know, he, he was tumbling around a little bit, but, but they, had, they had a great time, man. We, uh, you know, they celebrated with us at the hotel, and, and it was just awesome to get, you know, get to spend a night with them. Yeah. You, uh, you, you had, uh, what, I think you told me, what, nine? You, you, you get two tickets, mm-hmm. and then you can buy up to 13 more? Mm-hmm. And and you took nine extras? Or? Yeah, I gave. Okay. Uh, I had seven people down, and then uh, my agent used two of them. Okay. So it was a, uh, it was awesome, you know, to 
to uh, bring my family down and, and my girlfriend and, and her mom came down. So, you know, it was nice to have some people down there. Yeah. Did, did you think there was, uh, you know, everything you did, were there a lot of Packer fans around there? Yeah, there was. Uh, you know, our area, Las Colinas, was, uh, you know, it was pretty much Packer, na- Packer land down there. Um, you know, they, they had flags all over the place. Uh, so it, it was awesome. It was, and everybody was, everybody was awesome down there. Um, you know, everywhere we went, the people were great. So it was definitely a lot of Packers fans down there. Did you, uh, did you notice them at the game? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was a weird environment. You know, we walked out for a pregame warm-up, and, uh, you know, it was, it was really quiet in there. And, uh, you know, it was, it, it was, a diff- it was a, just a different feeling. It didn't really feel like a home game, but it didn't really feel like an away game. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were great, man. We, we, you know, we definitely heard them cheering. Uh, you know, the go pack go chance. Um, so it, it was awesome. Definitely noticed behind our sideline at least that there was a bunch of them. I think it's got to be the, uh, the, the one of the first things that uh, a young child, when they start to learn how to talk, that's they're going to have to be able to say that go pack go, go pack go, go pack go. It's go like the, go. it's like the new Uper slang only it's Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're from Wisconsin, you got to be able to understand to say go pack go go pack go. Instead of hey 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 how you doing today? Go pack go. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like Alabama roll tide. That's the go new thing. Go. Yeah, roll tide. Go pack go. <laughs> So I heard that uh, there's already been a couple of people come up here asking you to uh, demonstrate the Raji, and, uh, and and you said that you're pretty much going to do it. I, I, I don't know. I might do it at the end of the show. I, I, it, it is I, I can, uh, it is plastered we'll all over websites. You go to YouTube and and uh, and, and hook up the Raji, and uh, and they'll you you know you're there mm-hmm. and. I got to be honest with you. Out of all the people I saw on, on those videos online trying to do the Raji, you got some rhythm, man. I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, I mean, for a guy as big as you are, it's like <laughs> smooth. holy I'm smokes, smooth. you're smooth. Yeah, I could be smooth when I want to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that video is pretty funny. They were walking around asking us to do it, and I was like, well, whatever. So, <laughs> video is pretty funny. You guys watch on YouTube or whatever. I, I, you know what? I mean, I, I didn't know a guy as big as you actually had a little hip definition, but you do. You know, you're... <laughs> thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate you checking out my hips, man. That's... <laughs> Yeah, oh a, man! It, it, I was dancing a little bit last night too at the party, you know, from what I remember. You and, you and Joe Philip, <laughs> yeah, me and Joe were out there getting, getting crazy a little bit on the dance floor. <laughs> it was fun though, man. It's uh, I'll, I'll do it at the end of the show. I guess. Yeah, does, does, does BJ? I mean, does, does he even realize the phenomenon that he started now? He kind of gets embarrassed by it when you talk to him. Bring up the dance, and he's shut up, man, shut up. So I don't know. If he, you know, he, he gets a little embarrassed, but no, it's, it's definitely a trend going around the locker room, no doubt. No, right, we're gonna bring Justin Hull into the conversation when we come back. We'll continue here from the fifth quarter with T.J. Lang after this on the Woodward Radio Network. to In the Huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lang. And we are back here at the fifth quarter in Little Shoot along with T.J. Lang, Justin Hall from AM 1570. The score, Woodward Communications, joins us as well for the uh, remainder of the show. I, I, I have to follow up uh, very poor reporting skills on my part. What was, like, the dumbest question that, that, that you received at, uh, at the media day? Oh, man. Or topic I'm trying or to remember like what that. this guy told, asked me. He, uh, was it the guy in the cape that asked you the question? No, I didn't talk to that dude. What uh, about the guy in the box? No, Isn't there I a guy with a cardboard either. box Couple costume? There were yeah. weird people down there. But uh, one guy asked me if I was um, hot for the game or eager for the action. So he really wasn't was like, talking what? football, I was, was like, he? What, is, what did you just say? <laughs> I, I, I think I said eager for the action. I, I don't remember, but that was pretty dumb question <laughs> remember last yeah. time you answered a dumb question people found out you want to take over Hef's job yeah you brought that one up a few weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that was funny um you wouldn't be surprised some of the questions we get asked I mean uh I was watching I think ESPN and they were doing like top 10 dumbest questions of all time and some guy asked <clears throat> I forgot who he was talking to but he asked if you were a tree what kind of tree would you want to be god what the what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Big giant redwood. Yeah, right? It's like, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my daughter uh, my daughter said that uh, she would do the Raji with you if you, okay. you know. Okay, all right, that makes me feel better. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Justin, you're, uh, 
Yeah, what, what was uh, the thing that stood out to you about the, the Super Bowl victory yesterday the most? I think it was just kind of a reminder of the season. You, you watch this team each and every week, and something comes up, a little bump in the road, and just the way that they responded to everything, just how resilient they were. You know, when Driver and Woodson goes down, you see the momentum shift, but <laughs> still able to make plays. Uh, the, the big play by Matthews and Pickett causing the fumble. Then the offense goes right down and scores the touchdown. The big five-minute drive at the end, third down, Greg Jennings stepping up. I mean, Frank Zombo's sack, that was a big play that forced the field goal that ended up being missed. It was like every game we watched this year with the Green Bay Packers, and every time there was even the slightest bit of adversity, you guys had an answer, which to me was the most amazing and fun part about watching this journey, seeing you guys eventually pick up the Super Bowl championship. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, you know, yesterday was you know, no different than any other, any other game we played this year. Uh, you know, injuries, um, you know, overcoming the adversity, you know, just uh, says a lot about the guys and the coaches that we have. So it was a... Uh, you know, it was it was great yesterday. It's kind of a broken record, but I mean, it's it's been every single week. It's kind of the same thing. I mean, have, I think we've heard that answer from you almost each and every week. Yeah, you keep bringing that's it. That's what it seems like. Yeah, we got a. <laughs> you know, there's not many teams that uh, you know you, you lose 16 players and and you know six or seven starters that that can you know come back and respond the way that we did. Uh, you know, just hats off to Ted Thompson. You know, to bringing in the right guys to to fill in you know the shoes that. That, you know the spots that we needed uh, help at so uh, you know they had a lot of guys come in this year and contribute and you know yesterday was no different yeah, you know Bob Harlan said after the game yesterday that uh, he really feels good for Ted Thompson uh, it, w with this victory because uh, when he hired Ted Thompson to replace Ron Wolf he said he just you know it was he was barraged with calls and emails and letters and, and telling him that Ted was not the right guy for the job and so on and so forth and uh, so you know, within a short period of time later, about the same time it took Ron Wolf to turn the Packers into a Super Bowl champion. The first time around, Ted Thompson was <coughs> able to accomplish the same thing. Now, I, I, I'm just shocked. I was amazed that when I found out that you guys were sizing up Super Bowl rings Saturday night before the game. I mean, was there any part of you that suggested, that, that thought to yourself, boy, I hope we're not jinxing ourselves yeah, right here? Yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> but, you know, then again, we... Uh, we were going to get a ring no matter what. You know, if we ended up losing, then we were going to get an NFC Championship ring. So, uh, you know, I think that's uh, kind of why they did it before, you know, to get it out of the way because this week's going to be pretty hectic. So, uh, you know, it'll be tough to find time. But, yeah, that was definitely, uh, <laughs> you know, I hope we win, man, because it's going to be a waste of time if we're getting fitted for our rings and can't even get them. But. I know that uh, David Letterman actually asked you to be on the show tonight, but uh, you had a prior commitment, mm -hmm. uh, your own radio show. Yeah. So uh, to you, you guys, suggested uh, that Aaron Rodgers yeah. should be the guy that goes, and uh, so he'll be on tonight. So you might want to tune in. I know you're pretty tired from partying the last 24 <laughs> hours. Are you going to be able to stay up, or are you just going to DVD that one, DVR no, that one? I'm ready for round two tonight, man. i got to keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you guys surprised uh, that Troy Palomalo really had no impact on that football game? I think so, yeah. We were actually just talking about that today. Um, he didn't really notice him yesterday. I mean, I think the one hit he had was he popped Greg, but it was on the touchdown pass. So, uh, yeah, he was he really wasn't a factor yesterday. I think that was a credit, too, to, to Coach. I mean, you look at where he was lined up. Palomalu's a inside player, kind of inside that box. That's when mm -hmm. he does a lot of his damage and spread them out, forced them back into coverage, not really his strong point, and able to take advantage of it on numerous times. Yeah, they were, uh, you know, he's definitely a big part of their, their blitz package. You know, they bring a lot of pressures with him, and I thought yesterday we did a great job of, uh, you know, Aaron did a fine job of, uh, you know, identifying the blitzes that they were bringing and, and getting us into the right protection. So, uh, you know, we did, we did a great job uh, not letting any free guys get to the quarterback, and, uh, you know, we, we definitely, uh, you know, took care of number 43. He was, he's one of their playmakers, you know, that they got on that team. So, uh, you know, it was, it was nice to see us kind of shut him out. By the way, before we go any further, I, I, I got to say this because normally I say this at the outset of this segment here, but uh, this program is brought to you each and every week by a number of people. One of them is uh, LNS Classic Limousine. Lenny provides our transportation, Lenny, Lenny and Sue. <laughs> Personal, professional service for all occasions. You want the limo ride of your life. Call 800-830-5933. Uh -huh. And uh, oftentimes, 
uh, when 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 we have a product or a sponsor on the program, we like to try them out every once in a while. So uh, uh, my family and I rode with TJ from Green Bay, from Lambeau Field, to the show tonight in uh, one of the finest LNS Classic limousine mm-hmm. automobiles on the face of the earth. Uh, I, I told Lenny it's uh, that is one smooth ride, and it really was. Didn't feel a single bump on the way. You didn't? I felt a couple. I don't know. <laughs> Well, you're way in the back, though. You know, usually, you know, that's like riding in the back of the jet, you know. You, you, yeah. You, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get lost this week. That's right. All right. So, uh, Lenny, thank you very much for uh, all season long. And Lenny does a great job. He does. He, he really does. Um, so, one of the guys that, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that get credit for a lot of the things that happened in the game yesterday. But one guy that probably uh, goes a little bit unnoticed because he's one of those guys in the trenches um, and and that's Howard Green. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was responsible for the pressure on the first sack or the first interception uh, by Ben Roethlisberger, and he got the pressure and got the hit on Roethlisberger that forced the short throw. But what a mountain of a man he is! And you, you look at that man in the locker room, and he, you know, I don't really have a description as to what how you mm-hmm. describe his makeup. Maybe a. Uh, and you may not remember this because you're not old enough, but they used to have a, a, a toy out for kids called Weebles. Weebles wobble, but they don't <laughs> fall down. And that's kind of Howard Green, you know. He's he's that that's kind of what he's built like. Uh, but he's just one massive strong force, and he and he displayed that. And and he's been a guy, kind of one of those unsung heroes all season. Yeah, long. definitely. He's you know he's a guy that you know we talked about earlier bringing in new guys to to fill roles and. He was a great addition to our team. Uh, you know, he, he does go unnoticed a lot. You know, he, he doesn't stand out like, you know, obviously like BJ or, or, or Colin Jenkins does, but he goes in there and he gets the job done. And he's another one of those guys that's been around for a while. Um, you know, so he, he's a veteran guy. And, and you know, I saw him yesterday after, after the game yesterday and he was crying, you know, letting his emotions out. And it, it, was, it was great to, you know, see a guy like that, you know, watch all his uh, hard work pay off. Justin, I know we're coming up on a break pretty quick here, but. 11 rushes for the Packers from the running backs, 52 yards. James Starks did a pretty good job for all of the pressure that potentially could be on a quarterback under that scenario. I thought the offensive line did a bang-up job stopping blitzes yesterday. Exactly. I think that was – I wasn't surprised to see that little of rushes. I mean, Pittsburgh's one of those rush defenses. I mean, they're, they're not just good this year. They're historically good, one of the best years we have seen in a long time. But, I mean, you talk about unsung heroes – you can name every single player that played this year, and you can think of one, two, maybe three plays that they made. And, again, just definition of a team effort for yeah. you guys this season. We are celebrating a world championship of the Green Bay Packers tonight. <laughs> T.J. Lang in the house. We'll continue with more after this on the Woodward Radio Network. Now, back to In the Huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lang. And we are back at the fifth quarter here as we continue our final show of the football season after the Packers win the Super Bowl championship over the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the uh, the great tradition of the Stanley Cup when you win this, your team wins the Stanley Cup is every player gets to take the Stanley Cup home for two days. They get 48 hours with it, and most of them will take it and go party with it for 24 hours at least, and they'll drink out of it, and who knows whatever they, you know, what else they do. With it. What about the Lombardi Trophy? Does uh, you guys get any time with the Lombardi Trophy at all? And did you even did you parade around with it for a little bit? Yeah, I got to hold it a little bit, okay. but I have no idea what you know what they allow us to do. Yeah, I'd, you really I'd can't like drink out of it, can you? Unless there's no, a secret opening somewhere. But. <laughs> no, you can't. It's yeah. a that's a nice piece of hardware, though. It's a it's a sweet trophy, but uh, I'm not sure what they're they're. You know what their guidelines are about letting people take it or not. He did just tell me though that he wasn't allowed to bring it tonight. He asked, but they said it's not leaving the building right now. Yeah, so. they, they got that thing on lockdown. I tried to sneak it out, but <laughs> <laughs> it's down at Letterman with Rogers. Yeah, right? probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the uh, the unfortunate thing is that the makeup of this football team, as it is right now, the 53 plus practice squad guys that were responsible for winning the Super Bowl championship. Uh, is the cold hard reality is that the same group of guys won't be here next year not all of them there will be the main group body of players but uh, it's uh, you know the sad reality is is not everybody's going to be here next year and and 
you guys, 53 plus practice squad members, found a way to make it work this year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the thing about our team is we have such a strong core. I mean, you know, we got so many leaders on our team, so many veterans. Um, you know, you hate to see some people go, but that's, that's the nature of the business. You know, you obviously you'd like to have everybody back, but, uh, you know, with the salary cap and everything, and guy, got, some guys are going to get, you know, different opportunities to go, go play somewhere else. So, um, you know, However it works out, you know, uh, you know, we're just going to keep moving on, uh, you know, just like we did this year, bringing in guys to, to fill spots and, and have guys step up and play. I mean, we, we got a great core, so, you know, no matter what happens, we're just going to keep building on that. Yeah, Justin, some, some big names, one of them probably the biggest name, although there's one on the offensive line, too, and Darren College that is without a contract for next season, may have played his last game for the Packers. Cullen Jenkins on the defensive side of the football, in all likelihood, not going to be here next year. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of questions, too. And, I mean, w with Cullen and the amount of money that he's going to be able to get, you always question what's going to happen. What's the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. going to do? What's he going to do? And, you know, just kind of bouncing off what TJ was talking about before, so many guys step up. You know, these were guys that were practice squad, the not practice squad. Well, now that they have all this exposure, those are going to be guys that, you know, other teams are going to be looking to get. Mm -hmm. you got the Eric Waldens everybody knows about. You know, the Charlie Peppers everybody knows about. The Jared Bushes, guys that for the past couple of seasons were able to stay under the roster. Although I believe Eric Walden, um, you mentioned that name. I believe he does have one year left on his contract. Okay. Um, so, he's, uh, so he's good. But I know what you're But you, a, lot of, a lot of guys, a yeah. lot of guys that, you know, maybe mm -hmm. in years past you, you might have saw on a practice squad, but now – other teams are going to swoop them up because you saw the capabilities of yeah. so many guys this season. And, and there are guys like, uh, for example, the year before, Aaron Campman was yeah. a great Packer for, for a number of years, and uh, and he decided to uh, to go sign with Jacksonville, and the Packers win a Super Bowl without him. So, you know, it's not like, they didn't, not like they're not missed, but it's not like it's impossible to win without him either. It's, you got that core group of players, TJ, that uh, that's coming back for next year. Yeah. And, uh, and yourself included. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> We got a couple of years left, but uh, yeah, you know, no matter what happens, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that I, I heard, you know, rumors about teams trying to look at Matt Flynn. I mean, look at the game he had at New England, mm -hmm. you know, getting exposure there. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's going to be guys gone, but you know, we're going to have a lot of guys back too, and we're just we're just going to build on that. You know, there is likely going to be football next year, but are you confident <coughs> that there will not be a work stoppage or? Do you think there will be some sort of stoppage for at least some point in period of time? Mm, I don't know how soon it's going to get done, but you know I'm, I'm fully confident that we're going to be playing football next year. I, I don't see how it's possible to lock us out. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money that a lot of people are losing. Uh, you know, people that work at stadiums or you know, you know, everybody's losing out fans, everybody. So uh, you know, I don't see how it's virtually possible to, to keep us out of yeah. out of a season. Now the lockout means that on March 15th or whenever that time is uh, in March that's the date that you're locked out that means no off-season workout program no mini camps mm -hmm. no OTAs none of that stuff and for a guy like you going into his third year trying to win a spot into that starting rotation to not have the off that off-season workout program with your team it's it's a tough loss for a guy like you yeah it definitely is uh you know there's gonna be a lot of guys that they're gonna have to do other things you know go go places and train or, or hire personal trainers and, and find places to work out uh you know it's gonna be tough so the sooner they get it done the better uh you know for everybody i, I hope uh you know they can come to agreements pretty soon do you think that uh, there'll be 18 games when the new contract is done i don't think so um there's not one player that wants 18 games i mean we just got done playing 20 games and you know if we, if we were 18 games we'd be you know, second round of the playoffs right now. The season would be so long. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think there's many fans for it, you know, other than the, the owners and, and Roger Goodell. So uh, I don't think so. I think we were kind of joking about it before. You mentioned you played 20 games. It's a good thing you don't have to play 21 with some of the injuries you guys right, came out right, with yesterday. Right. Yeah, yeah well, we, just uh, think Woodson, yeah. I mean, he would be out of the next game. Mm -hmm. If you had to play Driver one more. Driver probably would be out, high ankle sprain. Yeah. That's what Pouncey had with Steelers. That's mm -hmm. a four-week injury. Well, Jordy Nelson apparently was hobbling around, and Eric Walden. And Eric Walden. Play. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad glad our season ended yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that anymore. So, you excited for the for the big guys? We run out of time here in this segment. Uh, you excited for the celebration tomorrow? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I heard it's supposed to be pretty cold, but uh, it'll be a good, it'll be a great time, man. One last time in Lambeau uh, this season, and, and go out there and celebrate and 
say thank you to the fans and, and uh, you know, bring, brought the trophy back home. So show it off a little bit. All right. Back with the final segment with T.J. Lang after this on the Woodward Radio Network. to In the Huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lay. Yeah, we are back here at the fifth quarter in Little Shoot as we uh, head into our final segment here, and uh, we're going to do our thank yous in, in ahead of time so we don't run, around, run out of time on the uh, backside. So uh, first of all, we'd like to uh, have a special thanks to the folks here at the fifth quarter for uh, hosting the program each and every week. Once again, Lenny and Sue from LNS Classic Limousine. Getting our players to and from every week. Obviously, T.J. Lang for being with us each and every Monday night. All of our affiliates around the statewide radio network out there in Radio Land, they're with us uh, each and every week. Uh, rain or shine, good or bad, win or lose. There haven't been too many losses this season, but we thank those folks for uh, being with us. A uh, large number this year, and we hope it grows again next season as well. Uh, of course, the fans here at the fifth quarter, and those of you... Back home listening each and every Monday night. Uh, Reggie Rizzo back in our network studios. Reggie, you don't see or hear from the guy. We try to keep him in you know, studios behind closed doors because uh, he's like a caged animal. You let him out and bad <laughs> things happen. But Reggie's been uh, punching all the, uh, the numbers back uh, in, in the uh, mothership over at uh, Woodward Communications. We thank Reggie for a fine job. Uh, Justin Hall with us every week. He's had a number of duties. He's a pinch hit for me. He's a pinch hit for a number of people. He runs our video camera. Now John Leopold running the camera. <laughs> Justin's up here. You, you got a license to fly that bird over there? <laughs> um, John Leopold. Our engineer is uh, Mike Steele, who's uh, sitting with us here tonight. Mike is uh, normally, uh, he and uh, Evan Stanick take turns. Evan is on the uh, controls back there tonight. He and Mike uh, take turns. And, and I know that uh, Steve Brown, who is our head engineer, uh, Steve knew we were going to be giving kudos to everybody, so he decided to show up tonight. <laughs> Steve, thank you. <laughs> Steve does a great job keeping everything in line along with Evan and, uh, and Mike doing a great job. John Wani, who uh, disappeared after his free meal, he took off, but uh, John does a... Uh, <laughs> John does a great job. He's, a, he's really the one that's responsible for our, uh, our statewide network. Uh, so he uh, gets all of that together. So we appreciate uh, John for the job he did as well. So uh, thanks to everybody. If I, I hope I didn't miss anybody. Did I miss anybody? You, you might have missed somebody. I don't know, TJ. I think you got it. That was pretty good a war speech there. Um, I want to thank you too, Bill. We couldn't do the show without you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, it's he said that on a tee nice. Yeah, he set, there, he set himself up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> nope, got everybody. All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, what's, what's up for uh, TJ Lang now in the offseason? What are you going to do with, over the next? I'm going to cut this beard. It's first thing I'm going to do tonight. Yeah. Can't wait to get this off. <laughs> you almost ripped beard? part of it off during the show. You're just I know, cranking I don't know that. that I don't know that I'd get rid of that. It took you all season to grow that. This thing's nasty, man. It's red. <laughs> doesn't match my hair, but it's... Uh, I got to cut the hair. I uh, know Grandma's going to hate me for it, take, but... Uh, I saw you take your, hair, your, your, your hat off earlier tonight. I don't know that anything matches that hair. No, anymore. I don't think so. It's, uh, <laughs> man, this stuff grows pretty wild. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shaving this off. First thing I'm going to do when I get home tonight. Um, but off-season-wise, uh, you know, just hang around here for a few days, wrap some things up, uh, you know, meetings and whatnot, and uh, probably head back to Detroit, you know, back home for a little while, uh, take a few weeks off. You know, it's been a long season, so... Definitely going to uh, refresh a little bit and then you know, start working out again. You know, got some time, downtime, uh, you know, keep in shape. Uh, you know, hope that, hope that this deal gets done so we can get back to work as soon as possible. How much time off do you give yourself? Uh, I, I'll probably take two weeks. Um, you know, it's, it's been a long season. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'll probably take a good couple weeks and, and make some trips around back home and see some people and see the family. So, uh you know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be nice to get some downtime, that's yeah. for sure. Well, you, you possibly could be in line to really push for a starting job somewhere mm -hmm. on the offensive line. It might be left guard. It might be right tackle. Kind of just depends, you know, how everything stacks out. So, so what's important for you as you, you look at that challenge and what are you going to have to do in the offseason to be able to get there? Uh, really, the most important thing for me is uh, just hoping they get this deal done so I can come back and, and uh, you know, participate in the offseason workouts and the uh, – 
you know, the, the OTAs and stuff because I missed that last year and it, it definitely hurt. You know, I had the wrist surgery uh, back in March. So, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't do anything until training camp. And um, training camp came around and, you know, I was – I was just behind, you know, and, and that's, you know, natural. You're not going to jump right back into it and, and be in football shape and, and be fresh on everything. You know, all those guys had, you know, seven weeks of OTAs uh, in front of me. So uh, I'm really looking forward. I'm, I'm glad I stayed healthy throughout this year. Uh, that was the most important thing for me. Um, stayed healthy and looking forward to a great off offseason. Uh, hope they get this deal done soon and get back at OTAs and, and uh, you know, and just get ready to go play football. So it, it's going to be a big off season for me. That's one other thing to do this off season. Maybe get a manicure. You're going to be showing off that hand with yeah, a right. little ring on it a lot. Yeah, huh? I can't wait to get that, man. It'll, uh, I think it'll, it, I think they said it takes a couple months, but uh, man, it, it's going to be awesome. What are your plans for the ring? I, I don't know if I'll ever wear the thing. I might just keep it on my. I mean, I might wear you know to a nice dinner or something, but. Uh, you know, flash it on the dance floor? Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it blinging in the lights? <laughs> right. Um, I don't know, man. That's going to be a nice uh, dresser piece. Keep it right up there on, on the dresser. So uh, that's going to be awesome to have, you know, on 30 years look back and, and, and have that baby on the on the dresser knowing that you know, we're, we're champions. So. It, it's I can't wait to get that ring. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it, and, and I, I saw Mark Murphy said they're going to start, you know, kind of getting. I'm sure Mike McCarthy will have, you know, a lot of say in it. Ted Thompson as well. But uh, you actually you sized yourself up for the rings, but mm -hmm. they really don't know what the rings are going to look like. Right. Yet. They're going to start designing that in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, well, that thing's going to be awesome, man. Having that uh, big old rock on my finger that, that's going to be fun I, I can't wait to get that ring all right tj it's been a lot of fun thank you Good for everything been. this season thank congratulations tj lang world champion everybody thank you guys man you guys have been awesome all year i appreciate it Justin Hall, thank you very much for a great season. Sounds good, Bill. We'll see you next year. All right. We'll see you folks back next year again in the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network.